HMS Endurance didn't start off her life as the Endurance, but as the MV Polar Circle. Hold on, wait, sorry, that's the wrong Endurance. HMS Endurance didn't start off her life as HMS Endurance, but as the MV Anita Dan, who would be built by Kronger Weft in Schleswig-Holstein area in Germany, and being launched on May 26, 1956, and put into service in October of the same year, being operated by the Luzerent Line. She would be 93 metres long, 14 metres wide, and have a draft of 5.5 metres. She would be powered by a single diesel engine powering the ship to a maximum speed of 14.5 knots. She would be designed to operate with a crew of 110, normally a handful of officers, and the rest ratings, or the equivalent to your said merchant navy. Now, the Anita Dan would operate with the company for 10 years, until the Royal Navy came knocking, and she would be purchased in December of 1967, where she would be sent for a 11-month refit at Harland & Wolf shipyards in Belfast for Arctic operations with an installation of a flight deck and hangar, as well as a few other modifications, like the addition of a two 20mm Orkans, as well as a new cool paint job. By June of 1968, she be commissioned as HMS Endurance, pennant number Alpha 171, and given the international recognised call sign Golf X-Ray Romeo Hotel. She'd be named Endurance because of the Endurance, the sailing ship that took the explorer Ernst Shackleton to the Antarctic in 1914. The Endurance would be operated by the Royal Navy as an Antarctic support and ice patrol ship, so she would support a bright red hull, white superstructure, and a tan-coloured funnel. In disguise, she would adopt the nickname the Red Plum. Now you're probably asking, why the funky colours? Well, it's in aid of recognition in polar waters, as ships painted in essentially 50 odd shades of grey would normally blend into the sea, the sky, as well as other conditions around there. So, in essence, they would basically be painted red, white, and say for instance, tan in aid of recognition, because red doesn't actually blend in with an ice pack. So, HMS Endurance would operate south in the Antarctic areas, calling into ports like Stanley, Cape Town, South Georgia, Chile, and sometimes Argentina, when they weren't thinking about retaking the Falklands. Now, when she was operating down south, she would normally have two helicopters on board, usually two Westland Wasps or two Westland Whirlwinds, and later they'd be replaced by two Westland Lynxes. So, in June of 1974, she would arrive in Her Majesty's Dockyard Portsmouth for a refit, which lasted until September 9th. However, her aircraft, which at the time were two Westland Whirlwind HAR-9s, would disembark and arrive at HMS Daedalus, which is today the Solent Airport in Lee on the Solent, just west of Portsmouth. On the 20th of the same month, her aircraft would re embark and she would deploy for five months in the Antarctic, being based out of Port Stanley. With the port visit at Dakar on the way down, which lasted about four days, as well as on the northbound trip home in February, she visited Buenos Aires. It wouldn't be until October 1976 when she would sail for another deployment this time a seven months in the Antarctic, supporting British efforts down there. This would be a quiet deployment, with a few penguins around and a few trips to Port Stanley. She returned to Portsmouth in May of 1977, where she would go alongside for some maintenance until 1978, when she would be going into refit in Chatham to add SATCOM equipment, or satellite communications equipment. Afterwards, she would return to Portsmouth and the South Coast areas, preparing for deployments doing operational sea training and other exercises along those lines. But by 1981, the SDSR, or Strategic Defence and Security Review, was published, and the Endurance was stated to be decommissioned in April of 1982. So, she would sail on her last deployment in October of 1981, departing Her Majesty's Naval Base Portsmouth for the South Atlantic. By December of the same year, she was in the South Atlantic, and one of the ship's Westland Wasp HAS-1 helicopters had actually rolled over following a landing just to the west of the position of the ship in South Georgia. Now, luckily, the aircraft was righted because it was on sand 
and return to the ship with a few little bits of damage to the engines due to ingress of sand, of all things. Now, on the 19th of March 1982, while Endurance was in Stanley, British authorities had received news that an Argentine naval vessel had landed Argentine civilians in South Georgia. However, if you're a little bit of a buff against history, you'll probably know that these weren't kind of civilians. The party, in fact, consisted of civilian employees of an Argentine businessman tasked with scrapping of an abandoned whale factory and the facilities on the island on behalf of the British Christian Sullivanson Company. Though an apparent misunderstanding, the Endurance, commanded by Captain Nick Baker, was sent to order the Argentines off the island. Now, Endurance had a small number of raw marines on board and took a further couple of marines from the naval party 8901 and sailed on the 21st of March for South Georgia. Arriving on the 25th of March, Endurance encountered the Argentine transport, the ARA Bahia Paricio, I believe, whose 40 Argentine troops had come ashore while the scrapping operation was taking place. Endurance landed her marines, then returned to the Falklands on the 30th of March. In April, the UK command ordered Endurance to join the UK task force, which in April landed SPS soldiers in Hound Bay on South Georgia. Now, task force vessels moved into deeper waters as a precaution against Argentine submarines, but Endurance moved to the sea ice near the shore because she was designed to be near ice unlike the uh, thinner-skinned vessels of the Royal Navy. Endurance would actually uh, get involved in some combat on the 25th of April 1982, when her two WASP anti-submarine warfare helicopters took part in the attacks on the submarine, the ARA Santa Fe. There's a brief already on it if you want to take a look at that. Which, however, was later abandoned by her crew. When the Argentine forces surrendered the next day, Endurance remained near the island to show the UK flag as well as to maintain a naval presence and guard the waters. Now, Endurance also took part in the rescue of the wildlife filmmakers Cindy Buxton and Annie Price, who were caught up in the war whilst working on South Georgia. After the Argentine surrender was signed on board the Endurance, Endurance, HMS Yarmouth, and the RFA Olmeda, as well as the Tug, the Salvageman, sailed to the South Sandwich Islands where Argentina had established a base on the South Thule since 1976. Endurance was carrying a Wessex helicopter for the first time, in addition to her two WASPs. The 10 Argentine military personnel surrendered after they saw HMS Yarmouth's firing display, and they realised that the recce marines from Endurance and 42 Commando Royal Marines had actually landed. The surrender was also signed in the wardroom of the Endurance. After the war, and especially to the, towards the end of her life, the ship became known as HMS Encumbrance due to her reliability problems, as she was about 35 years old by this point. In 1989, she struck an iceberg of all things, and although the, she was repaired, a survey in 1991 found her hull was not sound for a return to the Antarctic. So, she would be finally decommissioned, and she replaced by the MV Polar Circle, which later became known as HMS Endurance. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so that's the end of that video. Hopefully you learned something new, because I most certainly did. Now, if you want to go and support the channel, there is a link in the description below to the Patreon page. I would recommend doing it, but it's up to you. Also, if you want to come and talk to me, there's a link in the description for the Discord channel. There's a couple of good guys over there. We talk about a wide variety of stuff. So yeah, so thanks for watching guys, hit that notification button to stay up to date with what I'm uploading, and obviously give it a like, give it a subscribe if you really want to, and comments are always good, I like reading your comments. So take care, catch you next time.